Okay, hi everyone. This is gonna be a video walkthrough for ex check in exercise 24. Usually I don't make video walkthroughs, but I thought it would be helpful to see how Dijkstra's and ASTARs work. Okay, so the first question asks us to do, 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 find the ordering that the vertices are visited in Dijkstra's and select all the edges in the shortest paths tree. Okay, perfect. So there's a couple ways we can run Dijkstra's. One way is we can keep track of, sorry about that, we can keep track of the edge two and distance two arrays as Hug shows in lecture, but I think there's a slightly faster way that uses more of just like looking at the graph and that's the way I'm gonna show you guys right now. Okay, so let's keep track of the ordering of the vertices we're visiting and then I'm gonna highlight the edges in the shortest paths tree. Okay, so the first vertex we visit is A because that's the starting vertex, right? After going to A, how Dijkstra's works is we want to choose the next closest vertex to visit. So who's the next closest? It's B. So we go to B. Okay, so we start at A, then we go to B. Okay, so after going to B, we learn more information about the neighbors of B. Okay, so in yellow, I'm going to say all of these vertices, we know some way to get to these vertices based on the vertices that we visited before. Okay, so after going to B, we learn that we can go to C from this path and we can go to D from this path. And since we already visited A, we already knew that these are the potential paths we can take. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're saying who's the next closest vertex to A? Okay, well, we can see that the next closest vertex to A is E. So next one vertex we visit is E. So we go to E. Okay, so after going to E, we learn more about the neighbors of E. More precisely, we learn about like these edges here. Okay, so now going to E, right, we ask ourselves, who's the next closest to A? So we see the next closest to A has a two-way tie between F and C, right, because they're both five away. Oh no, okay, yeah, they're both five away. So which one do we choose? Well, we wanna choose the one that's alphabetically closer because that's how we break ties, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose C because we break ties alphabetically, okay? So let's add that in here. We've been to A, B, E, and now C, and then we add in that green edge, signifying that it's part of the shortest path tree, okay? So after going to C, what new information do we learn? Well, after going to C, we know that, right, there's these possible edges in existence, okay? So now we need to find the next closest vertex to go to, and we can see the next closest vertex to go to is F, right? Because we can go like that, perfect. So let's go to F, we'll add F, okay? And then we'll put a green edge because we're adding a part of the shortest paths tree. Okay, so now at F, we still have two vertices we haven't been to. We still haven't been to D and we haven't been to G, right? So who should we visit? Well, which one is closer? We see here that both of them are six away. So we need to break the tie alphabetically and we will choose D. So what do we do is we choose D and then we go to D. And then we see the last person we're going to is G and we'll probably take this edge because that's the shortest edge. Okay, perfect. So for a quick summary, the edges in our shortest paths tree are all that are highlighted in green and the order that we visit the vertices is right here. A, B, E, C, F, D, G, perfect. Okay, that is all for questions one and two. Let's keep going. So for the next part, we're gonna be running, okay, we will be running A star from A to D, okay? So the only difference about A star versus Dijkstra's is in Dijkstra's, we choose the next vertex to go to based on solely its distance to A, okay? So recall when we're running Dijkstra's, we choose the next vertex because we're saying like, let's say that we choose B and we're trying to figure out the next person to go to, we say who's the next closest to A and then we'll choose E, right? That's how Dijkstra's works. How A star works is when we're trying to go to a given vertex, we take in consideration 
the distance that we found to that vertex plus its heuristic value, okay? So if we're trying to go to E, E's priority in our priority queue will be the closest distance to E plus its heuristic, okay? So if this doesn't make sense, like, no worries. I think I'll walk through the example and I'll try to clear things up. Okay, so the first vertex we visit is A, right? And we see here that after going to A, we have information. I'm gonna put information in yellow. We learn information about these three edges, right? So the next person we want to go to is the person with the lowest priority, right? Well, what's the priority of E, C, Okay, we need to figure out these three people's priorities. The priority of E is four, right? Plus the heuristic of E, right? The heuristic of E is two. So the priority of E is six. Nice, okay. And then we see here the priority of C is six. Ah, oh, this image in the background is six plus two, right? And the priority of B is two plus six. Okay, perfect. So we see here the person with the lowest priority is E. So the first person we're gonna visit is E, right? So we add that edge and now we're at E, okay? So the next thing that we do is we learn about the neighbors of E, right? So we learn this information because going to E gives us more information about the rest of the graph. Now what we're gonna do is we wanna find the next vertex to go to based on its priority, right? So what do we do? We look at all of the vertices are in our priority queue and we choose the one with the lowest priority. So, so far in our priority queue, we have C with eight, right? Based on this, we'll put the Q here because this A star is a bit trickier than Dijkstra's. So I think it might be helpful to write out some of the Q. And then we have B is with priority eight, right? And then after going to C, okay, so after going to E, let's see what information we learn. We learned that G exists with priority six plus 12, right? Because four plus two is six, 12 comes from the table. So G has priority 18. So we'll probably put it at like the end of the queue because it's like pretty big. Okay, and then we also learn things about F. F's priority is going to be five plus five, right? So F is at 10. Okay, and then we also see that we learn information about this edge, right? We learn information about this new edge to C. And with that, we know that the priority of C is now seven, right? The reason for this is because we thought the best way of getting to C was by this edge right here. But after going to E, we see this is a better way of getting to C. So we update C's priority. Okay, perfect. So with this in mind, now we have this updated. Okay, give me a sec. Let me get rid of these black edges. Okay, so now we have this updated priority queue, so we can remove the minimum, right? And we see the minimum is C. So the next person we go to is C, right? And after going to C, we learn information about the neighbors of C. More precisely, we learn about these edges. Okay, so what do we do? We update the priorities in the priority queue. And we see the priority of B doesn't change. The priority of D changes because D didn't exist before. So D's priority is now going to be five plus three, eight. And then we'll put it, we'll put B to the left of it because B is alphabetically greater. Okay, perfect. And then we also learn something about F, but it's not really that useful because we already found a better way to get to F via E. Okay, perfect. So now we remove the minimum in the priority queue. So we remove B, right? And then we figure out that. Okay, so we go to B using this, right? And then what we're going to be saying, okay, we also need a green edge here. So after going to B, we learn information. The only thing we, we really learn is this edge right here, which doesn't 
really add anything because we already knew there was a way of getting to D with edge like total cost eight, right? The reason it doesn't add that is because you guys see here that this path to D is already recorded as eight. So once we figure out another path that's cost eight, we don't update our existing priority, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is remove the minimum. And we see here that we remove D because D is the minimum and we get the following, right? And then in order to get to D, how did we get there? Well, we took C like this, okay. So what we noticed is that the ordering that we visit the vertices, we first went to A, then we went to E, then we went to C, then B and then D. Right. Okay. That's the ordering that we visited them. And after running the shortest paths algorithm, after running A star, we see that the shortest path we found from A to D is this green path. Right. Okay. Perfect. So we figured out the ordering, we figured out the shortest paths, but it may come to your guys' attention that the actual shortest path to get from A to D is if we go via f right but for some reason a star didn't find this path instead it found a suboptimal path the reason for that is because f's heuristic is too high right if f's heuristic is five what that's saying is that the path from a e f d or a e f is going to be at best 10. okay so here's some like intuition on how heuristics work Right? A heuristic is basically telling you that if I went via this vertex to our end goal, the minimum distance from this vertex to the end goal is its heuristic value. Right? It's basically saying that, like, here's a guess at the distance between F and D, and that's it. Okay? The problem is if this guess is higher than the actual distance, we won't consider this path. Right? So we don't consider this path because we already found a way to get to D that's cost eight. And according to our heuristic, the best possible way to get to D or via F is five plus the heuristic of F, or it's five plus five, right? So this is the best, uh, best time to get to d via f. Okay, so that's generally what the heuristic is telling you. It's saying if I take some vertex, what's the fastest possible time I could take to get from my start to the end via that vertex? And that's what the edge, the distance to that vertex plus the heuristic of that vertex is giving you. Okay, so we see here that when the heuristic of f is an overestimate, right, it's more, right? Five is more than the actual, right? Because the actual is one, then we don't consider the shortest path. In order to remedy that, all we need to do is decrease the heuristic of F, right? More precisely, when we want to decrease it such that now the path to D via F is considered before we consider D, right? We want to consider F in the priority queue before we remove D from the priority queue, right? Recall that D was in the priority queue with priority eight. In order for F to be considered before D, F must be in the priority queue with a priority that's less than D's, right? So the highest priority that F could have such that it's removed from the priority queue before D is seven, right? In order for F to get a priority of seven, it, we know that the distance to F is five. So then the priority of F, right? This must equal seven. So we see the heuristic must be two, okay? So if we change the heuristic of F to two, now what's gonna happen is that F will be removed before D, we'll figure out there's a better way to get to D via F and we'll actually find the true shortest path to D, right? Okay, so that's basically all. To recap, the answer to the last question is F colon two, and this is a very tricky question.
Yes, yeah, so yes. Hopefully this helped a bit. All of this stuff is pretty fun, but it's definitely on the confusing side. So feel free to like come to office hours, come to live QA if you guys have questions. Yep, that's all. Have a good one.